Hello everybody, Lane Lovestone of Yellow Bird Acres TAC here and today we'll be doing a tutorial. This is a model horse English saddle panel tutorial. So here we are. I have a piece of tooling calf leather. I've cut it out into my pattern piece. And the very first thing we need to do when creating an English panel is wet the leather. We do a lot of leather wetting when we're working with leather. Uh, this makes the leather more pliable, it's easier to work with, and then it's easier to shape. So when we want to keep the leather in one position, we'll always wet it. Um, same with any time we're going to be working with the leather, we'll wet it. Um, so I just take a paintbrush here, and I just kind of paint the, the back of the leather. So this isn't this is the rough side of the leather. It's not the smooth side. So I'll put water all over the rough side of the leather and then I'm turning it over and just looking to make sure how uh, like soaked in the water is. So I want an evenly soaked piece of leather. Uh, now this, uh, I said soaked, it's not really like a soaking, it's more like you want it just damp. Damp enough that um, it it takes on a little bit of a darker color once it's damp. So this will be quite obvious when you switch it, flip it over, look at this uh, smooth side of the leather. You'll notice where which parts aren't damp enough. So now I have it com my piece of leather completely damp here. Now ready to move on to our next piece. So uh, next part is I'm going to take my my pattern piece here and I'm just gonna fit it over top of the leather now that it's nice and damp it's gonna hold shape so anything I carve into the leather is gonna stay there um, so what I'm gonna do is grab my little tool here it's got like a tiny little ball on the end of it so it's a good marking tool and I'm just gonna mark where the outline of the panel will be on the or sorry where the uh, knee roll will be on the panel so uh, I just trace over on the pattern where I want the knee roll to be. Okay, so now you can see it's left a mark. So now I can tell where my panel is going to, or my knee roll is going to be on the panel. Next thing I usually do, this isn't altogether necessary, um, but I'll use my swivel knife. So I take out my swivel knife and I'll just tool the where the knee roll will be. Uh, it doesn't make much difference in the final product. I just like to uh, just be a little bit more precise as, as to where I'm going to put the panel. So I just kind of put do this um, just so I have a better guide. Like I said, it's not necessary to do if you don't have the tools like the swivel knife. Then it's you can definitely skip this part. So I just uh, use my swivel knife to cut out, like I, basically I'm scoring into the leather, just a line where that knee roll is going to be. Do the same on the other side. So score my line with my swivel knife. Now these knives are made for tooling leather, so uh, you don't have to press too hard. You just get an indentation into the leather. So here you go. Now you can see my swivel knife cuts. And then the next thing I want to do to this is just bevel the inside of the knee roll. So here's my beveling tool. I had this, got this tool from Tandy Leather. It's just a simple leather beveling tool. Now usually with leather tooling, you want to be using a hammer to, not, uh, to tap into the leather. This just makes it a little bit stronger. Uh, I don't find it too necessary when you have this really thin tooling calf. Sometimes the uh, hammer actually goes in a little bit too deep to it, I find. So I generally just use like hand pressure with my beveler all the way down. So I'm just kind of walking it along and just pushing in as I'm walking it along on each step. Now that'll give us a really well-defined line as to where the knee roll will be. So there you can see. 
And of course, we always have to do the other side of it. So I'll just do that really fast. So next step would be to dye the leather. So I've got all my leather pieces dyed. So I've got my main saddle panel piece dyed, ready to go. Um, and then I have two pieces uh, of Skyver leather for the knee rolls. So now on the saddle panel, you can see I have done a bit of skiving all the way around. Um, so this is me just skiving any little extra bits of leather off the edge. I like to have a more of a clean edge. So I'll do, basically you're just shaving the back, like the rough side of the leather off, and you're just making it thinner. So next thing to do would be the knee rolls. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> next thing will be I'll just uh, wet my panel piece. Uh, a lot of the times, like I said, when we're working with leather, we want to make sure the leather's wet. So between many of the other tasks that I'm doing, I'm actually wetting the leather. Um, so just to keep it moist, um, keep it easier to work with. Like sometimes it does take a little while for the water to soak into the leather. So that helps with that. So I'll just uh, wet these pieces and then work on the next thing. So the next thing is the murals. So I have my piece of dyed Skyver leather. Uh, I've let the leather dry after it's been um, dyed because anytime we're gonna do skiving on the leather, we wanna make sure it's really dry. The drier the better. If you try to sky your leather wet, it will rip and tear the leather and it won't be good. You won't be happy. So we always make sure the leather is dry when we sky it. And generally with this sky leather, sometimes it's not necessary to sky it. Uh, especially when you're wrapping it around like a panel, like a, sorry, like a knee roll or something like that. Like, but I do sometimes like to just sky the outsides or the, the edges of it just so that it's easier to wrap around. Um, sometimes the skyver does come a little bit thicker than others as well so that's that's when you would want to sky the entire thing and then of course we want to wet the leather after we're done skiving so once we're ready to um, actually wrap the this leather around the knee rolls it'll be nice and wet so again do another wet wetting of the panel itself and that's just all for preparation work. So I know that I'm going to have to um, use that panel later and I need to make sure it's wet. So in advance, I'm going to wet it. So same with these knee roll skyver pieces. I know that they're going to have to be damp later. So I'm going to make sure that they are. Okay, so you see this panel wetting it does make it a little bit um, more pliable. So next thing to do will be to uh, cut out this craft foam. So this is just like a craft foam. You can get it at a dollar store. It's really cheap stuff. It's, it's good. It works for doing fluffy things like if you need something that's got stuffing in it. So uh, yeah, that's what I use for my knee rolls. So I take my pattern piece here, my knee roll pattern, and I'm just going to trace it onto the craft foam with sharpie you can you oh and here's Baloo that's my little puppy he's, <laughs> he's a cutie so yeah um my uh pattern piece of my knee roll I'm just gonna get trace with sharpie I find it works the best to show up uh really good on that craft foam so I know where my lines are I'll do a little x mark just to know um that that's the top um, or which side is the top so I know uh, how to wrap it later and just tracing around with the sharpie and a little X to know that that's the top all right so now I have those all drawn out and I'm gonna take my little knee roll pattern piece and make sure to put it back into my patterns 
Um, anytime you draw your own pattern or use any little pattern for tack making, it's always useful to keep it on hand. So always make sure you have a copy of that pattern for later. It's immensely helpful and will save you a lot of stress later on. So wetting that leather again and now we'll cut the panels out. So like you can see, like I'm constantly wetting the leather to get it prepared for the next phase. Um, it just helps to have it pre-prepared for later. And these little knee roll foam pieces are getting cut out. So generally when I'm doing that, I'm cutting on the inside line of the Sharpie. That way I know that's how big the pattern piece was. You won't want, don't want to cut on the outside. Sharpie is quite thick and will distort your pattern. So now I have those two little pieces cut out. And I'm gonna wet the skyver again, probably. Cause uh, it's good to have uh, the skyver leather wet when you're gonna wrap it around something. Like I said, it's more pliable. And the next thing is foam. So what I do is I use a foam under wrap. This is like a sports medicine foam under wrap. So it's actually for when um, you have an injury, you wrap your leg with tape. You're actually putting the foam under wrap underneath. So th I find this works really great for just fluffing up the, the foam a little bit. So um, I have a few scrap pieces here I'm gonna use. And just put my little bits of glue on top of my knee roll pieces. And I wanna make sure that glue goes on the, the X side. So spread it around a little bit, just get, gets more of an even coat. The glue that I use is just like a Elmer's glue all. It's, I find it works really great. I haven't had any issues with it or anything coming undone. It's easy to clean up and it's non-toxic. So I like that. So um, just gluing these little pieces of foam onto, onto the foam, foam onto the foam, <laughs> and just cutting off all the extra bits all the way around the edge. Sorry you didn't capture that. It's, it's kind of difficult trying to get you guys like kind of a, a first person view of this um, while working on it. So I'm, I'm doing my best trying to give you guys the, a best, the best image I can. Sometimes we get cut off because I can't actually see my camera while I'm doing this. So um, just hoping for the best. <laughs> and um so we have that all cut out now we can add a little bit of glue to the edges uh, you don't want to do too much glue here i just do like a tiny little bit and of course if you didn't want to do the foam under wrap you don't have to as well you can just use the craft foam i did that for quite a few years before um, actually switching with the foam under wrap i just think it adds a little bit more pushiness to the to the pads so that's why I use that and now we're glued so this stuff is quite sticky um, like I said less is more when it comes to glue on these um, because the foam under app when, when it is wet is very sticky it will stick to your fingers as you're trying to glue it down and it won't unstick until it's dry enough <laughs> so less is more um, takes a little while takes a bit of patience just to get it all glued down and then we want to let it sit so now we have these all done um, they're all wrapped with the foam under wrap so next step we can go back to our panel here and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my panel pattern piece again and uh, keep in mind this is damp leather and I'm going to mark where the keepers of the leather stirrups will be. So I'm just going to do two dots on either side of where I want to actually cut into the leather. So here you can see I've got my two dots there. 
and the wet leather allows those little markings to stay in the mark or stay in the leather if you were doing that on dry leather those markings probably wouldn't show up so that's why that's so important to keep the leather damp when you're working with it um, so the next thing to do would be to um, just cut tiny little slits where those um, keepers will be. Now I use quite a large like flat exacto blade so I'm just using the very corner tip to do that. Of course if you had like a sharper or like one of the other exacto blades that has like a sharp tip it would be a little bit easier to do but this is what I use. <laughs> It's easier for skiving and, and the like, and I don't want to switch my blade every time I'm I'm working with it. So that's what I do. So now I have those little um, cuts made. So they're just tiny, tiny little cuts, just big enough for the leather to go through. Uh, this, uh, here's my pan, or sorry, my uh, skiver leather for the knee roll. And I will uh, just put some glue, just a little bit of glue on the top of that, uh, the foam piece there. So got the leather or the, some glue on there. I'm going to spread it around just a little bit, get an even coat. And then take my Skyver leather, which is now quite damp. And just place it on top. I will tug slightly at the sides here just to kind of shape it while it's damp but not too much. Um, the glue that I just put down will have to dry before I actually wrap the skyver completely around. So it's not doing it like not pulling too much just very slightly kind of get like a rough shape of the knee roll. And then once I've done that, I will set them aside for a little while. Just have that glue uh, from the top just dry a bit. So we'll put those aside. And next thing I want to do is my stirrup leather keepers. So these ones... Uh, they kind of have to be like sort of a rectangle shape. So what I'll do is I'll do a, I'll bend it on the further right side once and then twice, kind of like an accordion. So just uh, sort of like a Z shape. So I'm just bending it once and then back again. So we get kind of like, um, I'm looking at like sort of like an up upside down U shape sort of but like more defined lines. I'll use my pliers here just to uh, get that more defined that sort of Z shape and then so uh, so a Z shape on one side and then a Z shape on or like an, a backward Z on the other side so it kind of gives you like um, a really well defined uh, shape there. This takes a little bit of practice just to get the correct um, depth that you want on there. Basically what you want is for the keeper to sort of um, sit above the, the panel so um, it has a bit of uh, three-dimensionality to it sort of. Um, so that way it's easy to slide your stirrup leather into whenever you need to. So there you go. I've got uh, those two shapes right there. So the next thing to do when it comes to putting these keepers in is I take out my awl. So an awl is like sort of a leather stretching tool. It's basically like a giant needle that gets like um, more thick as it goes to the base of the handle. 
So nice po pokey, very dangerous tool. We have to be very careful with this one. So uh, I'll insert it into the little um, slits that I made earlier and just uh, kind of wiggle my way in. And that just makes the hole bigger. So that way I can fit the end of the keeper in there. So fit the end of the keeper into that little hole. And I'm just going to trim it a little bit because it'll stick out if I don't. So fit that little keeper into the end of the hole there. And I only want the little end uh, tab to be underneath. So I'm going to glue that little inner tab down. And again, sorry I didn't capture that very well on camera there. As, like I said, it's hard. I can't see the camera <laughs> while I'm filming to give you this kind of like first person view. So I do my best, try to get everything in there. Sometimes it doesn't work out. But I'm just fitting the end of the keeper in there and then uh, do the other side. So basic basically same thing. Fit my awl into the little slit that I've made and glue it down. So we do that on both sides. So as you can see here, we have these three dimensional little keepers poking out. And that's where your stirrup leather will, like the end of the stirrup leather will sit. Cut off the little ends that may stick out past the side of the panel. And sometimes I do use my pliers to kind of help the gluing along, just make it a little bit flatter as well. So there you go. There you can see the three-dimensional effect of it. I want to thank everyone for joining me on part one of two of our English saddle panel tutorial. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on part two. Thanks so much, you guys. You guys are great. We'll see you soon.